I have forgotten the, the, the date. I thought I had it written down. May 17th, Brother Alexander, and I'm saying all on purpose because it's O-L, not A-L. Alexander Ilish from the Ukraine will be with us. Please uh, make sure that you come out and, and be with us on that Tuesday night. I don't think that he's long-winded. I'm not sure, but we can give him at least an hour, hour and a half of our time. School's almost out, isn't it? Is school almost out? In June? Oh, y'all got a little ways to go. <laughs> I try not to, I try not to take, go too much past 8 o'clock in the evenings, if, if I can help it, I try not to, because I know the kids got to get up and go to school in the morning, so um, we try not to do that, but I suppose some parents let their children stay up kind of late at night anyway, so maybe one day won't hurt if he keeps us a little longer than 8 o'clock, but um, I'd like for everyone that can be here to be here and to come and um, bring some friends, family, doesn't matter. This is not a, this is not a high pressure sale on how to get saved. We just want people to see how our brethren are living and faring in other countries. I think it'll be very good, very educational. Get the chance to ask him questions and talk a little bit about what they're going through in their country. His son is his interpreter. He doesn't speak English at all, but he was um, in the Soviet military before the breakup of the Soviet Union. So um, he's no longer in the military. He's got the Holy Ghost and preaching. So the, the, he's, he's got quite a testimony. I sat and talked with him for a, a while last year, and uh, he's got quite a testimony. So we want to hear him. All right, be careful when you leave out of here today. It's slickery. Slickery. Yes, it's very slick out there. So be careful. I threw some salt out. Who knew? Second week of April, we'd be salting the sidewalks down. That's, that's crazy. But um, threw some salt out there, out front. Please be careful when you're leaving out of here. Um, I don't know that there's ice out in the parking lot. We don't have no money. So, if you slip and fall out there, you're on your own. Now, we got some brothers that'll run out and help get you up off the ground. We'll do that. And apologize several times, but I don't think you're going to retire off of us. In the book of Amos. In the book of Amos. Chapter number six and verse number one, and then we will go to chapter seven. Amos chapter six, verse one, and then chapter seven. Everybody, everybody just, and I know all the young folks is kind of floating a little bit above their seat. I, from what I understand, they had quite a nice time the last couple of days. Very little sleep, but look, they still in here clapping. I, I was I was wanting to I was really wanting to pour on some preaching, but just standing over there clapping my hands, I'm wore out. So I might give a quick testimony and we go on home. <laughs> but I understand they had a, a wonderful time. Four people received the Holy Ghost, so we're very glad about that. Every time they go, they kind of show off. Amen. And they come back and act like we're just so old and boring. Well, I guess we kind of are. <laughs> but I'm glad to hear that, uh, that the young people enjoyed themselves. We try to do everything that we can to uh, make sure that our young folks have things to do. Because, you know, there are things to do. And so... I want to make sure that they're not out doing wrong stuff because they don't have no right stuff to do. Amen, amen. So if we can make a way for them to do right stuff, I am i i don't think I've ever, if I have, I don't remember, ever said no to anything the young people have wanted to do. 
and we make sure that they always have money to do it. Amen. Amen. I almost picked up a $500 offering today. We're going to start off at $500. (laughs) And everybody, everybody with $500, come on up. But say, right. But thankfully, the Lord has blessed us to where we don't really have to do that. And we're very generous with especially our young people to make sure that they have things to occupy their minds with because we don't want them occupying it with criminal stuff. And, and by criminal, I don't mean necessarily man's law. Sometimes they want to go out and break God's law too. If they do, we don't want to beat them up when they come back, do we? Thought I would throw that out there because, you know, when you get old, you lose patience for stuff. Thank you, sister. I'm saying amen, too, because I'm, I'm getting there. I'm almost old. I can see it around the corner. When, when we get old, we start losing our patience for stuff, and we say that young folks are silly. And I ain't saying that because that's what I think. I remember them saying that about us when we was young. We was uh, into foolishness and all kind of silly stuff, and they ain't going to make it. Well, some of us made it. Amen. Some of us did. So encourage, show love. They'll straighten out. You know, sometimes you just get tired of beating your head against the wall. Amen. Don't point no fingers, because some of us pointing fingers is needing some serious prayer ourselves. Amen. I'm saying ourselves, but I ain't including me. (laughs) Amen. In the book of Amos, chapter number six. Verse number one. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of of Israel came. Then chapter 7. And verse 7 and 8. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. And I just want to say this uh, real quickly. When he says, I will not pass by them anymore, he's not talking about walking past them. He's talking about overlooking their wrong. So I'm not going to just pass over their wrongdoing anymore. I would like to speak this morning from the subject line up. Now, we have two, two different passages here, and I want to say at the very beginning that I understand that this is the Lord dealing with Israel. But everything in this book is given to us not necessarily as a direct interpretation, but we have the children of Israel's behavior as an example of what to do and what to not do. Because one thing is for sure, the Lord doesn't change. He says that, I am the Lord, I change not. Now, people change. People's attitudes change. Our minds change. But God don't change. He might change how he deals with us. But he hasn't changed how he feels about wrong. Thank God he has changed how he deals with us because there'd be a whole lot of folks just struck dead. Man, because some people get cute with God and they think, they think they're funny. And of all the things to play with, God isn't one of them. I mean, if you don't believe in God, leave it alone. But if you do, don't, don't think that you're humorous and, and God thinks you're funny just because you got something cute to say. Amen. All right, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Go ahead. 
He says, woe unto them, or woe to them that are at ease in Zion. The children of Israel had gotten to the point to where they had somewhat of a social status where they were important. They were at ease because they were doing well financially. And there's something about having a little change in your pocket can, can give you a nice, gentle walk when you're heading down the street. When, you, when you're broke, it changes you. But it's different when you got a boatload of money in your pocket. It'll, it'll make you walk laid back a little bit, kind of casual. Things don't get you quite as upset because I don't care. I can just go somewhere and buy something. You know, we, we get like that. We'll change our whole posture because I got me some money. There's folks I know right now, I know when they got money and when they don't. I can tell by the way they act. Now, I can just say this. Don't nobody here know how I, how I act when I have money. Because I don't have none. <laughs> Never have. Chances of getting any is not looking good. But some folks, you can tell, as soon as they get two dimes in their pocket, their whole attitude change. This is the way they were behaving. We got money now. Hey Amen. It's, it's the rags to riches kind of story. They came out of slavery, out of bondage in Egypt, and came into a country that wasn't theirs. And it, it's not like they was rich overnight. It took some time to build up some wealth. It took some time to establish themselves. But once they did, they got this attitude of it's my way or the highway. They were being looked up to by other folks. They were proud in their behavior, their, their actions. They, they were proud people. They had just gotten beside themselves. And, and there is this thing about being important that kind of makes some folks feel like they don't have to line up with the rules. There are some people who are wealthy enough that they feel like the rules don't apply to them. They can say what they want to say. They can do what they want to do. They can act any way they want to act. And they don't have to worry about the police. They don't have to worry about... Uh, any, any of the authorities bothering with them, unless they go out and commit some kind of violent felony, they really don't have to worry about nothing. Yeah. And because they're shielded some kind of way, maybe because of their money. They donated a lot of money to the mayor's campaign, so they don't have to worry about it. The mayor runs the police, so they don't have to worry about the ticket. They get pulled over and go on and take their ticket and just call the mayor up. Yeah. Officer Johnson wrote me a ticket. I tried to explain to him that I wasn't wrong. I hope I don't get pulled over by him again. By the way, when is the next time the elections is coming around? Because I have some contribution I want to make to your campaign. It's not about the money for them. It's about I don't have to follow the rules. I'm in a position. If I can donate thousands of dollars, if not millions, to your campaign, a $125 ticket's nothing. But I'm trying to demonstrate that I don't have to follow the rules and I'm a little bit better than that. They have to pay, but I don't. I'm getting to something here. I, I just want us to know that this ain't no new thing. This didn't just start in this country. This has been going on since man's been around. Who's more important? Don't realize ain't none of us important. There are some folks who are just careful in their sin. You're not really sure whether they're doing right or whether they're doing wrong because they talk right. They, they know what to say. And I've said this before. Some folks know how to talk uh, in, in uh, churchology. They, they got the degree in that. They know how to speak churchy. They, they know the right things to say. They, they can use words like anointing and, and uh, the will of God and, uh, you know, declaring. You don't hear politicians talking about they declaring something, but church folks do that in a minute. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm declaring this in your life. Yeah. God has given me the anointing to uh, all that is, is foolishness. Yeah. Jesus said in the last days, many shall come and say, I am Christ or I am anointed. Got a whole lot of folks saying, I'm anointed and they're going to declare something on you. They know how to talk church. But can you live it when you by yourself? It don't matter what you do when you're around folks. When you get home and you close your doors, are you still anointed? You still living churchy? You still praying for folks? Or are you just out doing your little, oh, God bless you, God bless you, oh, God bless you, son. Yes, daughter, God bless you. Hey, Amen, I'm praying for you. And then when we get home, whipping up on somebody, hitting my wife and knocking her down, calling her names and cussing at my kids and looking at pornography on television and, and gambling away all my money and all that. Am I doing that privately but, but looking real churchy at home? I mean, in the streets? Well, this is what they were doing. They had it. They was careful in how they behaved themselves around people. Now, don't get me wrong. It's just as bad to be a careless sinner. Some folks don't care about nothing and nobody. I go do what I want to do and ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. And, and I can go to church. And I don't go to that church because the preacher just preach about too much wrong stuff. And I just need somebody to tell me how good I am. I'm going to that church. The preacher, when I went over there, he told me God was getting ready to pour out a blessing on me. Let's go over to his church or her church and they talking about, oh, you better live holy or you ain't going to make it to heaven. I don't want to hear all that. Amen. Folks kind of get that attitude. They're careless in their walk with God. I am not talking about just sinners. I'm talking about church folks, folks filled with the Holy Ghost. Get mad at preachers. I ain't going to his church no more. I'm tired of it. He always trying to make somebody feel guilty. Feel guilty now. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with feeling guilty when you're doing wrong. Let me just say it like this. Too many churches now are trying to make people feel comfortable with wrong. They pull folks off to the side. Baby, don't let them make you feel guilty about that. That's, that's your thing. God understands. Don't let nobody convince you of that. If the Bible says thou shalt not lie, don't be no liar and let somebody come up and try to convince you that telling lies is okay. You ain't hurting nobody with it. I'm going to move on because I can see I'm starting to lose folks. The, the sleep must be catching up with them. Amen. They were getting comfortable with sin. They were getting comfortable with being wrong. It's, it's one thing to do wrong, realize you're wrong, and repent. And I don't want to go back to that no more. It's another thing when, whoo, I sure don't want to get caught doing that again. That's a wrong attitude altogether. It's not about getting caught. It's about being wrong. He goes on in chapter 7 and he talks about the plumb line. I want to tie these two together because there is a place that you can get where you're so comfortable that you don't realize things are off. Man, if you own a house, you'll know what I'm talking about because there's times when you walk by the plug in the wall that ain't got the cover on it. The, light, the, the, the wall plug, it ain't got no cover on it, but you done seen it for so long, you don't even pay no attention to it no more. That's not right. You put a cover over it. That's, that's the right thing to do, but, you know, sometimes you got a little hole in the wall. You don't pay no attention to it because you've been looking at it for so long, you don't got comfortable with it. You know, the house can be leaning sideways. You don't even think about it no more because you're used to it being like that. There is a danger in getting comfortable with wrong. Because after a while, you don't even see wrong as wrong anymore. And so he tells Amos, he says, he starts off by saying, the Lord stood on a wall that was built with the plumb line. Now, let's just be clear about this. God's not being crooked for nobody. I don't care how much you love your mama, God's not going to be wrong for your mama. If mama's not lining up, mama's wrong. I love you, mama. 
But if you're doing this, you just leaning. That's all. Man, you know, when we were kids, they told us a story about the emperor's new clothes. How the man was walking around in his underwear, but everybody was telling him, Ooh, that looks good. I like your new outfit. The man made him a, a robe with invisible cloth. You, you, wow. I mean, just silly. And he walking around just prancing. Uh -oh. I know I'm looking good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Walking around in his underwear. Well, I know we laughing, but sometimes we like that. We walking around naked and wretched and miserable and poor. And folks is telling you, you looking good. And you say, oh, thank you. You know, all right. You know, we get excited about that. But listen, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Don't let anybody convince you that your wrong is okay. If God's not pleased with it, he's just not pleased with it. You want to pray? Pray that God help you get a right attitude about it. Pray that God help you to see how he's displeased and why, so that you can have a better mindset about it. I ain't saying that as soon as you read something in the scripture, you're going to be happy. Woo, the, the Lord said that's wrong, and I thank the Lord I don't like that no more. No, you might still like it, but ask God to help you to see why he doesn't like it. Ask God to help you to have the kind of mind that when something is displeasing to you, that is displeasing to me also. The Lord stood on the wall. That the, the wall is the thing that holds the house. You can't have no house that's just a roof. You know what they call those? Pavilions. Ain't got no walls, just a roof. Amen. In the summertime, we go and we go barbecuing at the park and we go under the pavilion. We don't go in the house, do we? Amen. A wall is what houses have. So God's house was built with the plumb line. Now, if you don't know what a plumb line is, it's got nothing to do with fruit. No. Amen. It, when you work in construction, yeah. there's some things. If you don't have a laser to yeah. tell you when something is straight, you need a line that can show you what straight is. Yeah. If a wall is, is just kind of leaning like this, how do you know it's leaning? Well, if you get a plumb line and hang it, yeah. and it comes straight down, then you know there's a bigger gap between here and here. So when the wall, when the plumb line is hung from the top of the wall and it's touching the bottom of the wall, that means it's straight. Mm -hmm. Not like that, because then you can see a gap. How do you know, how do they know how to put a roof on a house and, and there's not more overhang on this side than on this side? How do they know that? Well, you can use a plumb line. Mark between the two posts. Yeah. Get the center line on the ground. And, and when your rafter is going up, you hang a plumb line down, and when the plumb line is on your center line, yep. then you know you're at the middle. Nail it on this side. Then you can put one up on this side, and you're right in the center. Amen. That's what a plumb line will do. Amen. That was long before they had all this fancy stuff now. Now, you could use some, some trickery with mathematics to figure it out, but a plumb line is simple. It's just a string with a weight on the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, all. That's all. Ain't that easy? Ain't that simple? Just yeah. a piece of string with something hanging off the bottom of it. Yeah, and it'll tell you whether something is straight or not. Now the reason why he's using this as an example because God didn't make this hard. He didn't make this complicated. So you don't know whether you right or wrong. You don't know whether what I'm doing is getting somewhere and, and I just don't know am I living right or am I wrong. No, it's something as simple as a plumb line. Here is the plumb bob. All you have to do is hang from this, and it will tell you whether you're lining up straight or whether you crooked from it. It'll tell you that. All you have to do is just find what truth is. Truth will tell you what's right and wrong. Now, here's what, he, here's what he's doing now, because it's broken down kind of three ways. First of all, God has a plumb line on his church overall. His church is straight. And if you're not sure whether it's straight or not, all you have to do is look at that plumb line. It'll tell you whether it's right or wrong. I mean, I'm not talking about the worldly church. I'm talking about God's church, the ones that are trying to do what God wants them to do. That church is lined up with a plumb line. Then there's the local church where every assembly has its own kind of personality. I know a lot of times we get to thinking that Christ Temple Church is the only church in the world, but... 
It, we're not. There's a whole lot of other folks that's living for Jesus. A whole lot of other folks living holy. A whole lot of other folks that want to please God. But this assembly has to be measured by God's plumb line. This place has to be measured by what is straight and what is crooked. Who's the one that's going to be in trouble with God if the building has been built wrong? The pastor is. The pastor's the one that's going to be in trouble. When God came through to the children of Israel, he didn't get them because Moses was wrong. If they was wrong, God told Moses, I'm going to kill them all. Man. And the pastor said, that's Moses. He said, if you wipe, mark them out of the book of life, mark me out too. If you're going to take and wipe them all out, wipe me out along with them. I'm standing by your people for you. Oh, now we changed, didn't we? Ain't nobody saying amen about that. Man, I'm just saying, it, it, it's a dangerous thing when you're a pastor because, you know, if, if you're building wrong, God's not going to get just the people. He's getting you too. It don't matter how good your intentions were. If it don't line up with the plumb line, it don't matter. The man, we got a brick mason in here. They, when they come out, if the wall is crooked, they don't care how much you wanted to build it right. It's got to come down. They don't care how good your intentions were. Listen, I was just reading up on wall building, and I was so sure I got that right. They don't care. Tear it down and pick up your check on your way out. <laughs> it, it don't matter what your intentions were. So the church has to be built with God's plumb line. It has to be built off of God's word. But then there is the local or the individual that's being measured by God's plumb line. Now, this is the one that I really want to talk about because we're the ones that's got to line up. We really do. It don't matter. If I'm building the, the building straight and you still crooked, it don't matter. The goal is to get you straight. The goal is to get you to line up with God's line. What did he say? If God says that I need you to do A, B, C, you don't get a choice in saying, well, I like C, A, B, and say, well, listen, I used it all. No, it's got to be the way God said. Not only use what he said use, but use it the way he said use it. God is expecting the individuals to line up with his word. God is expecting every single person. If you don't know the word, why don't you? If you don't know the word, is it because you don't read? If you don't know the word, is it because I'm not preaching it? If you don't know it, is it because the ministry here isn't preaching the word? If you don't know the word, why? But I'll tell you what will not work as an excuse with God. This will not work. If you stand in before God and say, well, I, I didn't know. I was just listening to what the preacher said. That's not going to work with God. Come on. Does God expect you to listen to the preacher? Yep. But he said, now these men in Berea are more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that when they heard the word, they received it with all readiness of heart. Yeah, yeah. Then they went home and searched the scriptures to see whether those things be. Yeah. yeah, you can come and listen to me preach, but you ought to go home and open that up and say, did he say that word right? Did he, yeah. did he get that straight when he was talking about lining up with a plumb line? I'm going to go home and find out what a plumb line really is. Yeah. Oh, I see what a plumb line does. Oh, I guess we do have to measure up straight like the Bible says. I better make sure that the, what I'm building, I'm building the way God told me to build it. You can do all you want talking about uh, I'm doing this for the Lord. But if you're building crooked, it don't matter. It's got to be straight the way God said build it. It's time for us to start lining up. I feel this more and more in urgency. I know people been saying this for years and years. When I first, far back as I can remember, I can remember old folks saying, the Lord's coming soon. Well, he is. Do you know, my grandmother told me that when she first got saved, that folks wasn't even putting curtains. When they buy a house, they wouldn't even put curtains on the windows because they said, well, the Lord's coming soon anyway. Why do that? Well, that was 75 years ago, 80 years ago. Oh, well, what's
what's taking him so long? Well, let me just give you a, a little clue. If a year, if a day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day, since they started talking about it, it's only been a couple of minutes. That's nothing. But if you just look around now, you can see this world, not this country, this world is heading the wrong way. We are now living in the time of calling good evil and evil good. You do something nice and folks are laughed at you. You get away doing something wrong, they'll high five you. That's the age we're living in now. We are living in a time when the imaginations of men is only evil continually. Television is feeding us all kind of evil. The radio, all kind of evil. Newspapers, magazines, all kind of evil. All kind of evil. I can get anything I want right here. Used to be you had to go home and dial up on the computer to get out on the internet. Now I can sit right in my car while I'm driving down the road and get the internet on my phone. Don't want my wife to read my lips. I can text. I can talk, I can surf, I can do it all, even while I'm driving. It's illegal. And let me just say this for the record, that I do not surf the internet while I'm driving. Make sure that that's recorded. <laughs> Evil is everywhere. Our knowledge has increased. I read somewhere that we learn more in a month than the people that lived in the 1600s did their entire life. We have that much information coming our way. We are overwhelmed. And if we're not careful, we'll start to lean. Our building will start to lean in God because I'm tired of all the pressure of the world and what they're saying. I'm just going to give in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And after a while, when God hangs the plumb line, the building ain't straight. Amen. 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 All right, I'm through whipping up on the saints. Actually, whipping up on me. Is there somebody here today that wants to be saved? We we baptize you in Jesus' name. The Lord will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Anybody wants to be saved? Amen. Stand on your feet.